super, super, super empathetic person. And I always thought it was like, oh, that's great. I'm, I just care about people and I just, like, I can feel their emotions. And no, I am so empathetic that I can actually feel when someone is angry, when someone is sad, when something's off, I can always feel it. I can feel it with my best friend. I can feel it with my sisters. I can feel it over the phone. I can feel it with my kid. I can feel it with my husband. I can feel it with my clients. I can feel people's emotions. And I always thought that was a gift. I always thought God gave me this gift of empathy. God gave me this gift so I can help other people. And that is one of the reasons why I'm doing this podcast is because I am empathetic and I do care about you. And I do, I don't even know you. I don't know your name. I don't know who you are. I don't know anything about you, but I care about you because you know what? If you're here, there's a reason because I'm here for a reason. I'm here to fulfill my purpose, which is to help you, to help you with whatever it is, trauma or not trauma, trauma related or not. I don't care what it is. There's something I'm supposed to be helping you with if you're listening to me right now. And the crazy thing is, is that we were so afraid to upset our parent, for instance, my dad, because when he would drink, he would get you know, angry or frustrated or whatever. And I would just, I would just be hyper aware. So I didn't want to upset him because I didn't want to get yelled at. I didn't, I didn't want to get in trouble. So I was super aware of people's body language and their tone, everything. And now I am super, super empathetic. And that is part of the reason. I also believe there's a good reason for it. Not only, not just because of the trauma or whatever, I believe that God did give me a gift of empathy because I do care a lot about people. But now I'm a control freak. I have anxiety. I have to control everything. And you know why? Because I had no control over people's emotions, over what was going to happen in my house, what was going to happen at school. I had no control over anything in my childhood. And now I'm a major control freak. I didn't realize that until probably about five years ago, but I control everything. I went, I think I talked about this two episodes ago when I was kind of having a hard time in July and one thing after the other happened. My kids got COVID. I had to cancel all my trips. My, you know, one of my family members got sick and I lost, I lost it. I thought I was going to have a breakdown because everything was just in a rumble. It was just one thing after the other tumbling. My whole world was tumbling down on me because I couldn't control anything. And I never realized that being a control freak was because I had no control over anything in my childhood. I couldn't control emotions of, you know, of anybody. I felt like I was always going to be in trouble, you know, things like that. So I am now a control freak. And having an unstable or, you know, chaotic home, or whatever you want to call it, it just, now as an adult, like, I have to have control, and if this surprises you, it's okay. Just because you may have had experiences like this does not mean that I'm saying you had a horrible childhood. I did not have a horrible childhood. I'm not saying you had a horrible childhood. I'm just pointing out the traumatic things that affect me now as an adult, and affect me as a person, and that's what I'm trying to show you. So for me, this just shows me why the why I am the way I am, especially with my kids. So when we go back to when I was talking about how you react to your children, the control thing is what I was trying to get at. You feel like you have to have control, but when your kids get out of line, or I don't want to say get out of line, people don't like that, but like if they disobey you or you know, you tell them to do something and they don't do it. You feel like you are not in control, and that is a trauma response. So we are here to heal our trauma so we don't have to be this way. We don't have to get so angry when our kids, you know, do something, whether it's small or big, defiant, or just a little mess up. Because if you're like me, before before I started this healing journey, probably about, I would say, two years ago, year and a half ago, I would lose it. 
I would lose it. I, I've told you guys before, I was a yeller. I am a yeller. I'm not a yeller as much anymore, though. I'm very proud of myself that I have really, really taken a hold of that. And once I realize it, once I realize I'm getting upset and it's a stupid little thing or whatever, I have to take a step back and be like, look, this was a mistake. They, you know, they're only human. They're only human. And if we got in trouble every time we made a mistake, um, we'd probably never get anything done. I know at work, we're always, you know, if you have a boss, you have to tiptoe around, make sure you follow the rules and do all these things so you don't get in trouble. That's how our kids feel, you know? And I feel so awful when, you know, my son spills something and I'm just like, ugh, why? You know? And I just like, I take it back and I'm like, I'm sorry, buddy. Like, I didn't mean to get upset. And I always, always, always apologize to my children and I always accept, I always accept my consequence, my, I would say consequences, you know, if they're upset with me or whatever, I always say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have got upset. Mommy just, you know, got upset for a second. I apologize. You know, it was just an accident. You know, I always apologize and I always take responsibility for my actions and what I say and what I do. And I have noticed since I've been doing that, especially with my teenager, she has been so much more accepting of, you know, when I do lose it, when I do get anxious, when I do get overwhelmed and I, you know, snap at her or whatever, you know, and she has an attitude pretty much constantly because she's a teenager and, you know, I'm trying to not, you know, I guess tell her something about her attitude every, every second of the day because it's pretty much constant. There are some days where she's just great and, you know, but honest to God, like it's a teenage thing. Like, she's not angry. She's not mad at me. She's not mad at her family. She's just kind of like her tone is like that. So I have to remind myself, okay, I'm not going to yell at her 24 seven. I'm not going to yell at him 24 seven. I just have to take a step back and be like, all right, so this is because you are losing control. And our kids, I, I have really started to like a um, learn gentle parenting and, and no, I do not agree with everything. I'm sorry if you do, but I don't. But one thing I do agree with is we don't control our kids. Our kids are their own people, right? Like my son has his own personality. My daughter has her own personality. So when our kids defy us and we feel like we're losing control, we have to remind ourselves they're not our robots. They're our children. Yes, we birth them Yes, we raise them, but they're still people. They're still their own people. So again, that's another thing I've had to remind myself of. In the split second of me getting upset, I have to remind myself and tell myself, okay, you can't control every single emotion, everything that they say, you know, and I have to remind myself, this is you losing control. So you are snapping at them and it's not their fault. It's not their fault that I have unresolved trauma, you know, so that is where that comes from is the unresolved trauma. And my unresolved trauma, like I said, sometimes shows its head through my parenting and feeling like I'm losing control. And I feel like I'm in a panic and, you know, that's just how I react, unfortunately. So being aware of this, I feel, is a huge deal. I'm aware why I get frustrated. I'm aware that I need to take a minute breathe and think about why my children are being defiant or disobeying me and why I get so worked up. So I know, I know when I do it and I stop myself. So like I've said before, being aware of your mistakes or mishaps or just, you know, like faults. I mean, we're human. We have faults. We're not going to be perfect parents. We're not. I'm sorry. If you think you're a perfect parent, I'm sorry. You're probably not. Nobody is. We are not given a book when we have these children. Here, this is the perfect parenting. This is how you do it. No, because every child is different. Every personality is different. I can parent Noah, my son, one way, who's six, and I can parent my 13-year-old, Lily, another way, and they will be completely different. Their personalities and their person is completely different. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Okay, let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. 
Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. It's super easy. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. And it's super easy, guys. So good luck and happy podcasting. So one, it's not one size fits all. So you can't take a book and just say, oh, this is how it's going to work. So I feel like once you realize your faults and you say, you know what, I'm ready to change those. That's where that makes you a better parent. Just in, just in my opinion, but I'm healing and that's why we're here. Like I said before, that's why we're taking the time to understand our trauma and how to heal from it. And I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of me. I'm proud of us. Look at us. We're healing ourselves instead of looking elsewhere to heal our trauma. And remember guys, knowledge is power. Most of us weren't even taught about trauma or how it can affect our entire lives, but I'm telling you right now, it can affect you from your head to your toes and from your past to your present. And most people just roll their eyes at the word, honestly, because I was kind of like that. I was like, oh my God, trauma, blah, blah, blah. But what they don't realize is, is they don't understand it. And like I said, like they say, ignorance is bliss, right? So if you don't know it, you don't understand it, you're like, I'm, it's fine. I don't understand it. I don't need to, I don't need to learn about it or whatever. To be honest, none of us want to think that we have ever had trauma, a traumatic experience. It's not a happy topic most of the time and nobody really wants to talk about it. But did you know the more you talk about it, the more you release, the more that you talk about it the more release you get, the more you release you get from your mind, the more release you get from your chest. Have you ever heard like, oh, thank you for letting me get that off my chest. That literally means like, thank you for letting me release this and I can breathe better now. And when I was in therapy, okay, yes, I was in therapy. I had a whole other expectation I thought was going to happen when I got there. I thought I was going to go and sit there and be like, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what do I do now? This is my story, which took forever. She didn't even get to like all my story before I stopped going because of work and time and things like that. And I literally thought I was going to sit there, tell her all my troubles. And she was like, okay, this is how you fix this. Do this, this, and this, and then you'll all be all better. Like a magic freaking fairy. Like, no, it doesn't work that way. And if you think it works that way, sorry, sweetie, you are in for a rude awakening because it doesn't work that way. It works like you sit in the chair, you probably ball your eyes out where you're telling your traumatic experiences or your childhood or your relationships in the past, whatever, right? And then they tell you, they either ask you a couple questions, they make you think, so they do do that, or they're like, okay, I want you to do this, right? Go home and do some homework or whatever. And you do feel better. No, you're not fixed. No, you're not 100% better, but you do feel better. You feel like you got it off your chest. And that is what it is to talk about your trauma, to talk about your painful memories, to talk about things that you need to get off your chest. And when you do it, You feel like you can finally breathe. I know it's a hard topic. I know it's something that you don't want to do most of the time. But I encourage you, if you're not in therapy, talk to your best friend. Even if you never told somebody a situation that has been haunting you your whole life, that has affected relationship after relationship, that is affecting your parenting that is affecting your marriage, that is affecting your relationships with your parents or your siblings or whoever it may be, go talk to somebody. 
whether it be a therapist, your best friend, a freaking stranger on the street, I don't care. I don't care who it is. 